Hi, uh, my name is Burnett Stewart and I'm a senior software engineer and for the last three years I've worked with microservices written in Go dealing with millions of transactions a day. And today I want to share some of my experiences, frustrations, and ultimately how I learned to embrace the power of testing by applying idiomatic Go principles. Plus, I want to touch on how these principles help to scale the applications that I worked with. So, what do I mean by scale? Uh, for my talk, I really want to focus on the ability for the team to collaborate, and not just with team members in your engineering department, but also with other team members that make your product possible. So, this is including people like product managers and ADL, etc. Um, so, with scaling, the technical issues are usually pretty obvious. We want distributed systems, we want microservice architecture, while also balancing new features. Uh, on top of that, typically a service's final architecture and implementation is and should be constantly evolving. And while these changes are happening, there's also social issues like organizational changes is a lack of shared language that really further compound into the issue in the software engineering space. So while separation of duties is important here for being able to accurately communicate at scale what's necessary for the product to really come together seamlessly. So why do we need testing? Um, here's a test file um, that I've seen before, that I've written before, and really a lot of, over 60% of engineers are using automated testing in their pipeline, but it also tends to be misused or it really doesn't reach its full potential because of the quality of those tests. Usually the tests like this can be very brittle and hard to understand and hard to iterate on. Uh, when you see tests like this in your repo, uh, the user of your package is really not visible anywhere because we're only testing the effectiveness of the implementation. So if we want users to actually use our service or package, we need to shift our idea of unit tests and focus on the user behaves with your system. This quote here is uh, from the Go docs for, uh, for Effective Go, and if you haven't seen or bookmarked this page yet, I highly suggest you do because it's really full of gems and it's a useful reference. But what this is really highlighting here is that our previous problems, especially with testing at scale, it, we now can understand that it's a behavior problem and it exposes that while we do need testing for the implementation, of the product, we also really need to test the behavior in order to scale with the team members that make this product possible. So let's try and put this all together. Uh, so starting with testing, this is usually the hardest part. You're looking at a blank page, but let's take a requirement and break it down. Typically, a user test is a simple sentence that describes behavior, so it has a subject a verb and an object, so let's use that to create some better tests. I'm going to borrow some approach from the test-driven and just behavior-driven development practices and walk through this example using the red-green refactor approach. So here we can see that we have a basic test um, that is actually testing the behavior of our system and it's properly labeled as such where the test name is user uploads photo. Uh, since we're now properly testing this, the behavior of this system and how it's used, we can also easily add tests for bug fixes and new behavior. This information here is usually vital for other key stakeholders and team members as releases are done in a CI CD pipeline and it also serves to ground the team on the product through a shared language and ensures that we don't have to make sacrifices on quality while also testing new implementations. This is just showing the minimal amount of code here of what we needed to get the test to run and fail. So you can see we're just starting with a pretty blank page. 
And now we're finished with the red part of our test-driven development and we have a failing test. So now we need to get it to actually pass. So here we, we need to work on the implementation, but at this point we do want to just work on getting the code working as quickly as possible. So now we, do, we will have the test working and then we will be able to refactor with the knowledge of what the method needs to do in order to work for our user. So we did that simple code and it's still passing, great. So finally, we can refactor. So using the Itomatic Go that we talked about before, we can really break down the behavior of the system and we have a good idea of how the service works because of the uh, test that we did before. So again, breaking now that sentence structure where you have a behavior and with Go, there's typically an uh, idiomatic way to describe that behavior. So we have a user, we have a receiver, upload, interface, et cetera. So now we want to refactor. Uh, typically during this, you don't want to change your function call, but now we have how the user interacts with the system. And while we do know that the uploader wants to be an interface, because it's typically a collection of methods, we don't want to define that too early. And now we finally have a testing suite that is going to be easily understood by multiple members of the team. And we're also, in the, we're also able to send names to the test runs to also further separate scenarios when testing behavior. Now once these tests are added to the pipeline, uh, we have provided inline documentation on how the system interacts with users. And we've really figured out that we can now understand how our test should measure the public API of the package, and it becomes clear that the user should be treated as a first-class citizen. Uh, creating proper tests really propels the idea forward and makes the system easier to scale, and with the use of test tables to test behavior, it makes it highly visible and easy and readable for a wider audience. I'm gonna skip this and say, now to wrap up, because I'm running out of time, but um, I've had success in this pattern in the past, and I can't wait to hear more from other people and their experiences in creating human-centered designs. <laughs>